uh, to our New Year's Eve celebration video. Um, we're really looking at what is New Year's Eve, New Year's Day really all about. Um, if you if you know um, in your calendar, right, you have the 12 days of Christmas. Now, most people don't actually celebrate the 12 days of Christmas. They celebrate Christmas Eve and they celebrate Christmas Day. And most people celebrate Christmas Eve on the day of December 24th. That's not correct. Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, Epiphany Eve, all of these things, Easter Eve, have to deal with Genesis, Genesis 1. And they have to deal with the fact that when does the day begin? The day begins at the evening. So God created light, there's light. And God separated the light from the darkness, and the light he called day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. So there's always an evening to the day. There's evening, and there's morning. There's evening, and there's morning the third day, or the second day, the third day. There's evening, and there's morning. There's evening, and there's morning the third day. There's evening, and there's morning the fourth day. There's evening, and there's morning the fifth day. Right. The idea is, is that the the day begins at sundown or at actually at dusk when it's actually dark out. That is evening when and there's all sorts of things in the Talmud. Um, and I'm not very good at this stuff to identify and remember where they're at, but to identify what constitutes the beginning of the evening or the beginning of a new day. So Christmas day in the sense of the 24 hour period, or as we would think of it as a 24 hour period, doesn't begin at midnight, but begins at darkness on December 24th. And then it goes to that Christmas day the one day goes till darkness on December 25th. Now, the same thing takes place now as I look out my window and it's not quite dark enough yet to constitute the end of the day. But it's getting there. It's pretty close. And so we're almost to what would be classified then as New Year. Because New Year's Day, evening and morning, would begin on New Year's evening. So most of you that go out and celebrate on New Year's Eve evening, go out to the bar after dark, it's already the New Year. You're just out there celebrating the New Year. It's New Year's. It's not New Year's Eve and when the ball drops at midnight, then it's New Year's Day. No, that's the train changing over of a calendar that's not anything historical whatsoever that's not anything that transcends time what transcends time is the fact that time was given to us by the orientation of the sun and the moon and the stars these were given for us to measure things and to measure time and so when the sun goes down and the moon comes up even though it doesn't always happen that way but when that happens, that's evening, and then there's morning. So New Year's Eve is the evening. Now, the significant for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day for the church and for Christians is not about the changing of a calendar either. It's about the eighth day of Christmas. Because right now, as I look out my window again, it's not quite dark. So it's still the seventh day of Christmas. And once it changes to be dark, it'll be the eighth day of Christmas. And that's where the gospel reading 
of New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, which is the celebration of the circumcision and name of Jesus, the text is from Luke chapter 2, verse 21. And at the end of eight days, he was circumcised. Or rather, on the eighth day, he was circumcised. He was named, and they called his name Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So, this is the name that he's given is Jesus. And he's given that name on the evening or on the day, on the eighth day of Christmas. And the eighth day, again, all you got to do is look at a calendar now and you'll realize that Monday, last Monday, was Christmas. So that means that tomorrow is Monday and that's eight days later. The significance of eight days. Creation takes place in seven days. Six days God created the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day God rest. And so what does God do on the eighth day? Well, he rises from the dead. Jesus rises from the dead on the eighth day. And so he gives us new life and new birth on the eighth day. Your new creation begins, and for Jesus, as well as for the historic history of Israel, circumcision was that gift of new life on the eighth day. That eight days after you were, after you were created, you were brought forth from your mother's womb, you got to experience a lot of different things, and on the eighth day, you experience the horribleness of being circumcised. No. You experience the joy of being a new creation. And that's the symbolism of eighth day. You should go throughout your church, you should go throughout churches that you know, and find things that have eight sides. Find things that are significantly orientated around eight. And you'll notice that eight... The number eight is very significant to the orientation of a new creation and new birth. And so just as you're born on Christmas, Jesus is born on Christmas, eight days later, he is circumcised and given his name, Jesus. He is remade. That's part of the significance of New Year's. So... That's, that's really most of what I wanted to be able to tell you about New Year's. There's a huge thing, again, New Year's Eve. To know that evening and morning thing is phenomenal. And to be able to recognize that Eve does not mean the day before. Eve means the night of. The night of that day. Because remember, even when it's 12.01... It's still night. But is it the night of the 20... Or is it the night of the 1st? Or the night of the 31st? Even at 2 a.m. When people go home from the bars because they're closing. Maybe they close later. Um, even at 2 a.m. Is that Sunday night? Or is that Monday night? Or is that Monday morning? It's not really morning because it's not daylight yet. So it's night. But what night does it belong to? For most of us, the night belongs to the day before it. Rather than, as creation would tell us, it should belong to the day after. One last thing as we talk about that. Which came first? The chicken or the egg? And most likely, if you believe in evolution, you would have to say the egg because there was something that evolved into a chicken. And so therefore the egg came first. 
If you don't believe in evolution, believe in biblical creation, and actually are a Christian, I shouldn't really say it that way, if you actually believe in biblical creation, you would say, God created chickens. He didn't create eggs. He didn't create eggs that would hatch into chickens, but he created chickens that would hatch eggs. That's quite simple. So if you believe in creation, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Not a question. God came first and God produced chickens. It really does come down to this whole creation thing and the emphasis on, again, believing in the eight days and with the New Year's being the eighth day, as well as creation thing, recognizing what Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, Easter Eve, Pentecost Eve, all these things really have to do with anything. Even All Hallows Eve. What is it really about? It's about the night of all saints. All right. I am King David, or Darth Dave, um, and we will see you again some other time.